This is your nine minute call. Nine minutes, everyone. This is your five minute warning. That means John is, in fact, on his way back to the dressing rooms. Play it cool, guys. I'm <laughs> 
Shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that will be ere the set of sun. Where the place upon me? There to meet with Macbeth. I come, Grey Malkin, panic calls, anon. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and fill the air. What bloody hand is that? This is the sergeant. Hail, great friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou did leave it. Oh, doubtful it stood. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, from the western isles of Kearns and Galloglass is supplied. Oh, oh, but all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name with his brandished steel, carved out his passage till he faced the slain. Which ne'er shook hands, nor bade farewell to him, till he unseen him, from the nave to the chops, and fixed his head upon our battlements. Valiant cousin, worthy gentleman. Mark, King of Scotland, Mark. No sooner justice had, with valor arm, compelled those skipping kerns to trust their heels. Oh, but the Norwayan. Began a fresh assault. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict, till that Bellona's bridegroom confronted him, point against point, rebellious arm against arm. And to conclude, the victory fell upon us. Great happiness. Go, get him, surgeons. Ah. Ah. No more that thing of Cardor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death, and with the former title greet Macbeth. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. Where hast thou been, sister? The sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap, and munched and munched and munched. Give me, quoth I, a right thee, witch, the rough fed runyon cries. Her husband's to Aleppo gone, master o' the tiger. But in a sieve, I'll thither sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do, I'll do, and I'll do. Look what I have. Show me, show me. Here, I have a pilot's thumb. Practice homework he did come. A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. So foul and fair day I have not seen. What are you? They look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on it. Speak, if you can, what are you? 
All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cornwall. All hail Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. <clears throat> Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? If you can look into the seeds of time, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail! 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy yet, not happy. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. By Simon's death, I know that I am Thane of Co Gloms, but how caught him? The Thane of Cotter lives, a prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be caught him. Speak, I charge you. The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. I am sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, and for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee Thane. Of Cardinal. What? Can the devil speak true? Lots. And Thane of Cardinal. The greatest is behind. Tis strange. And oftentimes, to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness will tell us truths. Win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Cuts. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me such an earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cardiff. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? If chance will have me king, or chance may crown me without my stir. Give me your favor, my dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Let us speak our true hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then enough. Come, friends. They met me in the day of success, and I learned by the perfectest report they had more in them than mortal knowledge. And I burnt with desire to question them further. They made themselves air, into which they vanished. While I stood wrapped in the wonder of it all, came missives from the king. You all hailed me the Thane of Cardor. By which title the weird sisters before saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with king that shalt be. Great Glamis, worthy Cardo, that shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. To follow the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here. Fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold! Great Glamis, worthy Connor, <laughs> great above by the all hail hereafter. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. When goes he hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never sun shall that morrow see to beguile the time, look like the time. 
You must bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall leave this <clears throat> night's great business into my dispatch. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle has a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. This guest of summer, the tipple hunting Bartlett does approve by his beloved masonry that the heaven's breath smells wooingly here. No jutty freeze, no buttress, no coin advantage. But this bird hath made his pendant bed in her credent cradle, where they most breed and haunt, I have observed. The air here is delicate. <sighs> see, see our honored hostess. The love that follows us sometime is our trouble, yet still we think is love. Herein I shall teach you how you bid God ill us for your pain and thank us for your trouble. All our service, in every point twice done and then done double, we are but poor and simple business to contend with your honors deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. For those of old and the great dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. Where's the Thane of Cawdor? We coursed him at the heels and had a purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well and his greater love Sharp as his fur hath helped him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever have theirs themselves and what is theirs in comp to make their audit at your highness's pleasure and to rest your own. Give me your hand. Paint up to be my but we love him highly and shall continue our graces for him. By your resources. He's here in double trust. First, as his kinsman and his subject strong, both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murder shut the door, not bear the knife myself, Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculty so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet-tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked, newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless quarries of the air, shall blow the horrid deed into every eye till tears drown the wind. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, only vaulting ambition which overleaps itself and falls upon the other. How now? What news? Why have you left the chamber? We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I bought golden opinions of all sorts of people. Was hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? <sighs> hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what thou didst so freely? Prithee, peace. I dare do all that may become a man. He who dares do more is none. What beast was it then that made you break your enterprise to me? When you durst do it then, you were a man. To be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. Neither time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake. I have given suck. I know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. Yet I would, while he was smiling in my face, pluck my nipple from his boneless gums and dash his brains out, and I so swore as you have done to this. We should fail. Wait, kill? 
But screw your courage to the sticking place and we'll not fail. While Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains rely with wine and wassail so convinced that men are to be a fume. When in Swinish sleep their drenched natures appears as if in a death. What cannot you and I perform against the unguarded Duncan? <laughs> Bring forth men, children only. Thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time of fair show. The false face must hide what the false heart doth know. Heavy summons lies thy sight upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Who's there? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest. The king's abed. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat the while upon that business, we should spend it in some words. At your kindest leisure. Good. Propose the night. Thanks, sir. Likes to you. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The hand toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, yet I see thee still. Art thou a dagger of the mind? Or art thou a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressive brain? I see thee yet in form as palpable as this which I now draw. Thou marshalest me on the way that I was to go, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made fools of the other senses, or else worthy of all the rest. I see thee yet, and on thy blade and dutch and gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business that informs thus to mine eyes. As I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Here it's not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Which hath made them drunk hath made me bold, but hath quenched them hath given me fire. He is about it. The doors are open. Surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets. Who's there? What's up? Alack, I am afraid they have awaked and tis not done. I laid the daggers beside them, but he could not have missed them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I would have done it. My husband? I have done the deed. Didst thou hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? I. This is a sorry sight. Foolish thought to say a sorry sight. Methought I heard a voice cry, saying Glom's had murdered sleep. And now Cardo shall sleep no more, Macbeth shall sleep no more. My worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go, get some water. Wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why do you bring the daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them. Smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I dare think of what I've done and look upon it, I won't. Firm of purpose. Give me the daggers. If he do bleed, 
I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me that every noise appalls me? Oh, what hands are here? How they pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash clean this blood from my hands? My hands are of your color, and yet I shame to wear a heart so white. We hear a knocking. Retire we to our chamber. Oh, a little water clears us of the deed. How easy is it then? Oh, oh, more knocking. Put on your nightgown. Lest occasion, occasion call us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, twere best not know myself. Wait, don't be worth thy knocking. I would thou couldst. There's a knocking indeed. If a man was the porter of Hellgate, he should have old turning the key. Mm. Knock! 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 Was it so late, friend? Ere you went to bed, that you do lie so late. Faith, sir, we were carousing until the second cock. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. And what three things does drink especially provoke? <laughs> Nose painting, sleep, and urine. Oh, oh, literally, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him and mars him. It sets him on, it takes him off. It persuades him and disheartens him. It makes him Stand to and not stand to. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir. The very throat on me is thy master stirring. Ah, our knock he has awakened him. Here he comes. Is the king stirring worthy things? Not yet. Well, he did command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. Oh, horror! 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 Tongue nor heart cannot conceive or name thee. What's the matter? Murder hath broke out the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not make me speak. See and then speak for yourself. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I would have lived a blessed time. What is amiss? Your royal father is murdered. Oh! 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 By whom? Those of his chamber seemed to dunt. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. Oh, do I repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. There, the murderers, them steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love and courage in that heart to make love known? Oh. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office, which the false man does easy. 
Out to England, where we are, there are daggers in men's smiles. Thou hast it now, King, Cardinal, Glamis. All as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playest most valley for it. Yet it was said that it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in home. But hush! No more. Here's our chief guest. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and we request your presence. Let your highness command upon me. Guide you this afternoon. I, my good lord. We had else desired your good advice in today's council, but we'll take tomorrow. As far you right? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time. Twixt this and supper. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland. But enough of that till tomorrow. Hie you to a horse. I do. Goes play on. Ah, my good lord. Our time does call upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo stick deep. There's none but he whose being I do fear. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head, they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip. If it be so, for Banquo's issue, have I filed my mind? For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered? Rather than be so, let fate come into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's that? Ah, oh, was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was. So please, your highness. Well then, now, have you had time to consider of my speeches? Know that it was he that in times past held you unto such fortune you had thought it had been our innocent selves? This I made known to you in our last conference, passed in probation with you, how you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments who wrought with them, and all things else to half a soul and notion praise, said thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so and went further, which is now the point of our second meeting. Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue? that hath bowed your head to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my liege. Ah, in the catalog you go for men, as hounds, greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, shucks, water rugs, water rugs and demi wolves all are by the name of dogs. If you have a station in the file, not in the lowest rank of manhood, say it, and I'll put that business in your bosom that takes your enemy off grapples you to the heart and love of us who wear our health but sickly in his life, but in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, in the vile blows and buffets of the world and so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, stug with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid of it. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. Oh, true, my lord. So he is mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. And though I could with bare-faced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will about it, yet I must not. For there are certain friends of his and mine whose loves I must not drop, who wail the fall of him who I myself struck down. Thence it is that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. So our lives. Your spirit shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment of it, 
for it must be done tonight. And something from the palace always thought I required a clearance. And with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in the work, his son, Leonce, who keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must meet the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are resolved. My lord. Abide with him. I'll call upon you straight. It is concluded. Banquo, if thy soul's flight must find heaven, it must find it out tonight. Not have all spent. For our desire is got without content. It is safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now? Why do you keep alone, my lord? The sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which indeed should have died with them they think on. Things without all regard should be without remorse. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, while our poor malice will rest in danger of her former tomb. And ere shall we eat our meals in fear and sleep in the terrible affliction of these dreams that shake us nightly to lie in the torture of the mind in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. Nothing can touch him further. Gentle, my lord, sleep over those rugged looks. Be bright and jovial for your guest tonight. So shall I, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence with both eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must lave our honors in these flattering streams, making our faces visards to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowst Banquo and his playoffs lives. But in them nature's copy is not eternal. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund, ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere to sh black Hecate's summons the shard born beetle with his drowsing hums rings in night's yawning peal. There's to be done a deed of dreadful note. What is to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. Come. Sealing night and scarf up the pitiful things of day, and with thy invisible hand cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rookie wood. The good things of day begin to droop and drowse, and night's black agents to their prey do rouse. Thou marvelous at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make themselves strong by ill. So prithee, go with me. Mark, I hear horses. He was the light man. Follow. Then tis he, the rest already are in the call. The light, light. Tis he! There do it. It will be right tonight. Let it come down! Oh, Tretton! Fly the Fleons! Fly, fly, fly! Ask the way for me! Out, the sun has fled. Oh, what's away? And say how much is done.
You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Ourself will mingle with society and play the humble host. There's blood upon thy face. Tis painful, then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? Oh, my lord. His throat is cut. That I did for him. Oh, thou art the best of the cutthroats. Though he is good that did the like for flayers. If thou didst, thou art non perium. Most royal sir. Flans escaped. <laughs> On comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, but now I'm cabined, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo's safe. Hi, my good lord. Safe in a ditch he bides. With twenty trench gashes in his head, the least of death to nature. Thanks for that. Get thee gone. We'll speak tomorrow. My royal lord, you forget to give the cheer. Ah, sweet remembrance, sir. <laughs> um, ah, ah. Good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. The table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, your highness. What Ooh. is that move? Which of you have done this? Thou can't say I did it. Never shake thy glory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. A sit, royal friend. My husband is often thus and has been since his youth. Pray you keep seat. The fit is momentary. <clears throat> Are you a man? I and the bold one that looks on that with my Paul the devil. Who oh, proper stuff? This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to dunk him. Oh, these flaws and starts, true impostors to fear. It may very well be a woman's story told around a winter's fire, authorized by a random. Shame itself. Why do you make these faces? You look but upon a stool. Look, look there. Lo, what say you? If thou canst not speak to, if carnal houses and our graves must send those we bury back, our monuments shall be the Mars of kites. What a man it in folly! Oh, if I stand here, I saw him. Die for shame! The time had been that when the brains were out, the man would die. And such an end! Now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, my noble friends do lack you. I do forget. Give me wine, no fool. I drink to the general joy of the table and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would that he were here. Oh, upon thee, and quick my sight! Let the earth hide thee! Thy foes are narrowness, thy blood is cold! Thou hast no speculation in thine eye, which thou wast glaring! Was a man dare, I dare, approach thou like a rugged Russian bear, the old rhinoceros, or the hurricane tiger! Take any more but that! Hence, unreal mockery, horrible shadow head! Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray you sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broken the good meaning with most admired disorder. Can such things be? You make me strange when now I think that 
you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? Pray you speak not. He worsens and worsens. Questions enrages him. Go at once. Good night. Stand not upon the order of your going and go at once. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. I will tomorrow to the weird sisters. More shall they speak on this. But now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. You lack the season of all natures. <clears throat> Come, will to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants our use. We are but young indeed. Dig to the dark, finger off first strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make our gruel thick and slab. Add there to a tiger charger for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, double toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron, trouble. Answer me. Say if the hats would rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call him. Let me see him. Come, Come high or low, low thyself and off his deathly show. Macbeth, 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 beware Macbeth, beware the thing of fire. Dismiss me, enough. Whate'er thou art. For thy good caution, it hath half my fear aright. But one word more. He will not be commanded. Here's another, more potent than the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of women born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? Yet I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live. Listen, but speak, speak not to it. Be there, little crowd, and take no care. Who shapes, who breaks, or where conspires are. Macbeth shall never vanquish thee until great Berman Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against thee. Oh, that will never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree and fix his earthbound root. Sweet, both good. 
Yet my heart throbs to know one thing more. Will Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more! I will be satisfied. Show! 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart! Come thy shadows so depart! Filthy hash! Why do you show me this? Horrible sight! A fourth? Stark eyes! What? Will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Now I know it's true. For the blood bolted Banquo smiles at me and points at them for his. Where are they? Gone? From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand. To crown my thoughts with deeds, be it thought and done. To the castle of Macduff I will surprise. Put to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all those unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No more boasting like a fool. This I'll do before this purpose cool. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His fight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom. To leave his wife. To leave his babes. His mansions and his titles in a place where one's himself does fly. He loves us not. I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he is wise, noble, judicious, and he best knows the fits of the season. My pretty cause, blessings upon you. Father he is, and yet he is fatherless. I am so much the fool should I stay longer. And what will you do now? How will you live? children. Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Be not a niggard of your speech. How goes it? Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound they have ever yet heard. Hmm. 
Guess it. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven. My children, too. Did you say all? Oh, Elgar, all? What, all my pretty, pretty chickens in one fell swoop? Let this be the whetstone of your soul. Let grief convert to anger. Blood not the heart. Enrage it. Oh, gentle heavens. Front to front. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. Within my sword's length set him. If he escape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Our power is ready. Macbeth is ripe for the shaking. Receive what you you may. The night is long that never finds the day. I have two nights watched with you and can perceive no truth in your report. Lo you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life, fast asleep. Ah, you see her eyes are open. Ah, but their scents are shut. Here's his spoke. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. What? Why it is time to do it. Hell is murky. A soldier and a fear. What need we fear when none can draw our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Oh, do you mark that? Vain of fight had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands never be clean? Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. He has the smell of blood still. Oh, the perfumes of Arabia cannot sweeten this little hand. Oh! Ah! What a sight is there! <laughs> the heart is solely charged. Go wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I'll say it again. Banquo's buried. He cannot come out on his grave. Go to bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Oh. Unnatural deeds do bring unnatural troubles. More needs she, the divine, than the physician. So good night. I think. But dare not speak. Is near, led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Near Burnham, what shall we meet them? That way are they coming. Who knows if the will be with his brother? For a certain, sir. He is gone. I have the fire of all the gentry. There are Seward's son, and many other of you that even now commits the first of man. What does the pirate? Great but to me, he should be fortified. Now this is the secret murder sticking. Who then shall blame his bastard sentence to recoil and start? When all that is within him has condemned itself for being there, will work shall not to give obedience for its truly hope. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly off. Till Burnham Woods come to Dunsinane, I cannot take with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Was he not born a woman? 
The spirits that know all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man of woman shall e'er have power over thee. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear will never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. I have lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the sear, yellow leaf, and all those things that should accompany old age, such as love, honor, obedience, and troops of friends, I must not look to have. But in their stead, curses, not loud, but deep, mouth honor and breath, which the poor heart fain deny or dare. Satan! What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me mine armor. It is not needed yet. I'll put it on. Scur the country round. Send out more horses. Hang those that talk of fear. Give me my arm. I'll not be afraid of death and pain till Burnham Wood come to Dunsinane. A siege to scorn. Here, let them lie till famine and ague eat them up. Whence is that noise? Tis the cry of woman, my good lord. Long has it been since I have tasted fear. The time had been that my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. I have supped full of horrors. Wherefore was that cry? It's the queen, my lord. She's dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools along the way to dusty death out. How do we handle it? Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Well, thou comes to use thy tongue, use it quickly. I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I descend and watch upon the hill, I look toward Burnham, and anon, me, me thought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! If thou liest from the next tree, will thou hang till famine cling thee? I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth, saying, Fear not, Macbeth. For no harm shall come to thee until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. And now a wood comes to Dunsinane! On! On and out! The king of Algis! There's no flying heads nor tearing here! Bring me along the earth! Oh, wind! Come wreck! At least we'll die with harness on our back! Shall with my cousin, or right 
son, lead us into battle. And Duncan, we shall take up once what us remains to do according to our order. Very well! You hear the heart of the tyrant's power tonight! Let us be beaten if we cannot fight! Make all our trumpets speak! Give them all breath! Those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. Tyrant! Show thy face! Thou beast slain with no stroke of mine. My wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. I bear a charm in life that must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. <laughs> Cursed be the tongue that tells me so, for it's a cow my best parts of man. I will not fight thee. Then yield thee, coward. Live to be the showing days of the time. We'll have thee as our rare monster. Painted on a pole and underneath, here, the king of the tyrant! I will not be baited to kiss the boy mouth and speak, nor be baited by the mouth's curse. And though a word comes to dunce a name, and thou being a fair woman born, I'll try my last. Before my body I throw my warlike sheep. Lay on the duck, and damned is he that cries home! Enough! Ah! 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 Behold where stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. Hey! King of Sky! Hey! hey King, King of Sky! My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth the arrows, the first that ever Scotland in such a name honored, that calls upon us by the grace of grace. We will perform in measures time and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one whom we see as crowned at Scouts! on stage if you guys can come up here really quick uh, we just want to thank you so much for an amazing show dawn for making us look just phenomenal the whole time she made all the projections amazing uh, a great costumer erin she's made us look fabulous uh, our co-director and best actor here uh, amber making us and uh, 
John, who trusted us enough to put this on. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think that's it for them. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks okay. for coming. Okay.